in the views. It is so great to have you here. The energy is different. I mean, Larry's nice. I mean, he's a little bit but it's good to have all of you here. So, and for those still worshiping with us online, welcome to Faith at Home with Pastor Carla still. Uh, this is the time. Please go and light your Christ candle. We have our little lit this morning from our um, sunrise service. So please light yours now. Remind yourselves that Christ is with us no matter where we are. And it's his spirit that unites us. Just a few reminders or announcements this morning. Um, in my emails for the past couple of weeks, at our last Ag Council meeting, we had talked about looking into going to a one board method of church um, organization, and everyone decided they'd like to talk to Pastor Scott Mack, because Buttsville Church has gone through this process, and that's how they run their church now. And he's more than happy to speak with us due to his schedule. It will have to be um, at the end of April, so please check your calendars for April. I believe it's the 25th. It's the last Sunday in April. Say around 1 o'clock. We would meet here in our sanctuary because I'm also inviting Walnut Valley Ad Council to come as well. So they're looking to do the same thing. So we have enough space here. So check your calendars and please let me know if that date is good for you, that date and time. So, uh, I think that's it. Let us welcome in Easter with hymn number 302. The words to your hymns are on the blue insert. Your bulletin. Christ the Lord is risen today.
singing, you know, we're all wearing masks, but still when you sing, you give a lot more pressure when you sing. So if you're sitting, you can't get as much going. So I feel a little safer if all sitting while we're singing. With that, please join me in our call to worship. How joyful it is to celebrate the good news of God's love. We are called to be Easter people. Christ has claimed us. The love of God binds us. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Now we sing, lift high the cross. Number 159. How many verses? Um, that is one, two, three verses. Take it. <laughs> I think Rachel has turned around and picked up what our 
When you're asking for prayer requests, please use first names only, uh, because we don't know people's um, desire of to privacy or not. Um, we might not mind the church knowing, but this is now on Facebook. So first names only, and that works well. I have a joy that we're all here. <laughs> Gracious, almighty, risen Lord, awesome God, gracious God, Lord, this Easter Sunday, we are just so blessed to be back together physically to worship you and praise you. We, pray, we have worshipped you every Sunday, Lord. That has not stopped, but to be together and gather together is just such a blessing. We feel your spirit among us and within us so much stronger when we gather and we thank you for this. We thank you for the blessing of Easter. We thank you for the blessing of your presence with us each and every day. And this day, Lord, uh, we are just here to bow our heads before you as always, to acknowledge you as God of all creation, Lord of our lives, and then the one who knows us and calls us each by name. So this day, Lord, we just sing and we praise you because you are our risen and living God. And as we come, Lord, we come with cares and concerns in our hearts that we place on your altar at this time. We just give thanks for Jim for being with us and among us, willing to share his gift and his talent of music that adds so much to our worship. We thank you for blessing him and we thank you for his generosity. And Lord, we place in your care, David, as always. We place him in the palm of your hand and ask for your will to be done. We know, Lord, that being called home to you is a form of healing. And so we just pray that this is your will. May it be soon, and if not, strengthen him in mind, body, and spirit to continue on in this life for you have something prepared for him. And Lord, for Brian's family and the whole family, we pray for them as well. It's so difficult during this pandemic to lose a loved one. For it's, we often can't get together as much as we would like and share or show us grief. So we ask, Lord, that you will send your spirit to these families, that you bring them the comfort and the consoling that they so need. Be with them and raise them up at this time. And Lord, we give you a shout of thanks and praise for Rachel. To hear that they finally seem to have gotten this diagnosis. Thank you um, for guiding the doctors and thank you for helping make her road. May this be her road to recovery and back to life as normal. For someone so young, she has been through so much, but she still looks to you and knows and trusts in you as our great physician. And so continue to make her stronger and help her return to fullness and wholeness of 
with health each and every day. And for Cindy's health, Lord, we pray. You know whole lot what she needs, and we just ask that you will give her and respond to her needs at this time and always. And Lord, and through this difficult time we are in, we pray for our Asian brothers and sisters who are just experiencing so much pain. Lord, touch the hearts of those who just don't seem to understand that we are all brothers and sisters in you, that we are all uh, your creations, and we are all equal in your sight. Soften hearts, fill them with compassion and love, and help people to see that we are all here because of you and for you, and that no one is better than the other. Help return us to unity in our country and this world. And Lord, those who are worshiping with us online also have prayers and concerns, and they place them on your altar at this time. Lord, for all those who have been named that need your healing touch, we ask as our great physician that you return them the fullness and wholeness of health. For those who may be grieving at this time, we ask that your spirit bring them comfort and peace, that peace that only you can give. And for those who have just had a wonderful, joyful time in life, we thank you for sharing in that as well and just adding to it. And as always, Lord, we pray for this world. Where there is war, let there be peace. Where there is oppression, let there be freedom. Where there is hunger, may they be fed. Where there is illness, may they be healed. Through us, through others, may this world come to know the peace and the kingdom in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation to deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Gospel reading today comes from the 20th chapter of John. This you can stand for. So early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb, both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look in the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus says, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that she had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Thank you, Jim. We've got a song to sing. I skipped it and walled my mouth. Okay, let's sing together. He lives.
Christ is risen. Let's try this again. Christ is risen. All right. Now I can start my sermon. I have to understand my opening line is we say that and it just drops off our lips like breathing. It hasn't worked out in any church. But anyway. <laughs> and my point is that for after 2,000 years, as a church, we are used to proclaiming Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. But if you've noticed in this morning's gospel passage, that's not how the first Easter went. Not by a long shot. We've just heard the story where uh, Mary went to the tomb early in the dark, and she gets there, and she sees that the stone has been rolled away. We, we all know this story. But did you ever pay attention and notice that she never looked inside? She just made an assumption. And commentators say that Grave robbing was very common at the time, so it would have been logical for her to assume that Jesus' body had been stolen. So just seeing the stone rolled away, she didn't even bother looking inside. She just went and ran. Now why just to two of the disciples, maybe the other ten, or actually nine, were sleeping? We don't know. But she gets Peter, and the disciple whom Jesus loved, whose scholars believe is John. So she gets Peter and John, and tells them his body is gone. So they have a race to get to the tomb. John gets there first, peeks in, but doesn't go in. Peter gets there second, but runs right in. And he sees that, just like Mary said, there's, there's no body there. John finally enters in. And he too sees just the linens there. There's no body. Jesus is gone. And it says in Scripture, if you caught it, that the, the disciple whom Jesus loved then believed. Believed what? All this time, I've always, it's in my mind, like, that he believed that Christ had risen. Why and why not? But with careful reading this year, I noticed that the sentence after that, that says he believed, is in parentheses, and it says they had yet not understood that Jesus must be risen from the dead. So no, John did not believe that he was risen from the dead. He believed Mary. He believed what Mary said, that Jesus' body had been stolen. And with that, Peter and John head back to wherever it was they were. Now Mary stays there, of course, and she's crying, and she peeks in, and she sees the angels, and they ask, why are you crying? And Jesus comes along, but she doesn't recognize him as Jesus, and he asks, why are you crying? And it's not until like three quarters of the way in, almost to the end, where Jesus says her name, Mary. And she finally understands and recognizes who is standing in front of her, the risen Christ. And then for Rabbi Nai, teacher, and she runs and tells her brothers, her brothers, the brothers, that she has seen the Lord. Now, all this is great. All this is our usual Easter sermon, Easter topic. And we just celebrate the risen Lord, the risen Christ, the resurrected Christ. But what does this have to do with us today? Other than we get to dress up pretty and come to church and have a nice meal and all those good things that go with Easter. Well, the thing is, they didn't understand the risen part. Now, risen is a church word. It's, you won't hear it much outside of church. No one is here, I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, no one here has gone, gee, my corpuses have risen this week, or the daffodils have risen because it's been so warm. We don't use that word, except when we're here in church on Easter. And the word for risen is definitely defined as to waken or rouse from either sleep or death, or inactivity or ruin. Inactivity or ruin. So I want us to think about this past year that we've all lived through. It's been a little over a year that this pandemic has hit. 
a little over a year where most of us have squirreled away in our homes, unless you were an essential worker. Um, thank you, Dr. Cohn. <laughs> if anyone else wanted to keep working, uh, you know, most of us, life slowed down. And I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, hearing people just being so, ah, oh, I've my closets cleaned out, I'm getting my basement cleaned out, I've got the flower beds cleaned out, I've gotten to my to-do list that I've had for 10 years, it's finally getting finished. You know, all those kind of comments. And then there was a lag, and when, once all that was done, and we were still quarantined to our homes, um, then started the grumbling and the, <laughs> why do we have to do this, why do we have to wear masks, why do we have to do anything? And then a little past that, you started hearing, you know, this slower pace of life, it's pretty good. It's nice not having to wake up every morning with a gazillion things on my plate and I have to you know, be stressed out to get done today. A lot of people started enjoying this slower, inactive pace of life. Well now, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We're not out of the pandemic yet, but vaccines are getting out there. You know, most people are comfortable wearing the masks. Most people understand social distancing. Um, and life is starting to get back to normal. We're starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel. We are starting to be risen. Now, Jesus was risen in, in an instant. This is a slower uh, take on this. Um, in fact, I, I really wanted to prep, pop up my, my pup tent up here for a, a, just a visual sermon prop to think about when you ever get out of a tent, you get up and you're kind of curled up and you get up and this is slow rising. Yeah, that's us now. We're, we're slowly risen and getting out of this time of inactivity. But what does that mean? Why did Jesus have to be resurrected? We use that word to another church word um, that's not used any other time but Easter season. And that's because the resurrection, if he had not, he was a teacher. That's what Mary called him, Rabbi Mind, teacher. He had finished his teaching. And we all know the lessons he taught. The thing is, had he not risen from the dead, he would have just been another teacher. But with that rising, it affirms, confirms, however you want to put it, that yes, he was the Son of God. Yes, he is the Son of God. And it just adds far more weight to everything he said before Good Friday. Now, the important thing to remember, you know, is the definition of resurrection. Now, resurrection means to cause to stand on one's feet again, which is what happened to Jesus. But also, in a figurative way, it is used to mean a moral recovery of a spiritual truth. A moral recovery of spiritual truth. <coughs> now, we know what they are. Jesus taught his whole life the spiritual truths that God would want us to know. The two major commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And he did this, I love John 10.10, 10, probably my favorite Bible verse. That's Jesus' mission statement for life. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly, or to the fullest. So, this resurrection, this getting back on his feet, this learning, getting back to a moral and spiritual truth applies so much to us today. We are coming out of this pandemic slowly but surely. And it's a global thing. And but so much has gone on along with the pandemic in our world and in our country and our lives. And as we think of being the resurrected Christ, we are the body of Christ in the world today. We think about this Easter and we are in the midst of the pandemic. We are in the midst of the George Floyd trials. We are in the midst of Asian hate crimes. We are in the midst of having thousands of people, many of them children on their own, coming to our borders for reasons 
I still don't know why they're so desperate. I, I still have not found out why are parents so desperate to send their children here by themselves. If we are to be the risen Christ, our responses to these, and these are just major headlines, but there's many others out there. Our response to them will reflect whether Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, or not. And that's up to us. Will Christians, years from now, look back at this point in history and, and be like Mary at the tomb the first time and say, they have taken the Lord and I don't know where they put him? Or will they see the risen Christ? Our response to all, all these issues going on will reflect that. And how we live it will just say, He is risen, He is risen indeed, or not. We claim to be Easter people. We are to be risen and resurrected. And live as Christ would live. And live as Christ would want us to live. The choice is ours. I pray that years from now, other Christians will look back and say, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, that Easter morning and every day following. I may it be so. Amen. Amen. You know, the bulletin says um, our offering is next. This is in books. Um, we, when the pandemic started, said we would not have an offering. If you have a donation to give, there are offering plates at the back of the church. You can drop your offering in at the end of the service. Thank you. We're going to move right into our time of Holy Communion. So if you, does everyone have their communion elements? Okay. Please join me. Dear ones, this isn't my table. 
This is not your table. It's not our table. It is Christ's table. And because it's Christ's table, all of us are welcome here. At this table, you don't have to look a certain way, you don't have to worship a certain way, or look a certain way, or love a certain way. You don't have to believe what I believe, or believe what the person sitting next to you believes. You just have to come exactly as you are, not because you must, but because you may. And here, find healing and wholeness for your journey. Will you join with me, please? Christ, who was there before the universe was called into creation, Christ, who was anticipated by the prophets and prepared for by the people, Christ, who was born in the manger, baptized in the Jordan, and who calmed the sea and formed the Galilee, Christ, who fed us all with word, with healing, with loaves and fishes, Christ, who saved us with a cross and an empty tomb, Christ, who never faded, never abandoned, never truly left us, Christ of love, it is with you and because of you and in celebration of you that we gather around your table and gather here as we are, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, consecrate this loaf and this fruit of the vine and consecrate the elements all who have in their hands. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at our table, that our eyes may be open, and that we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst and in each other, and be united with all whom Christ, for whom Christ died. Amen. Amen. And so, so remember, remember that on the morning of Jesus', Jesus resurrection, Mary, Mary went to the tomb. tomb. There, there she found that the stone had been rolled away, and his tomb, his tomb was, was now empty. empty. There Jesus called her by name, and so this morning we remember the story of Jesus' resurrection. We remember the story, we gather around our tables, we break bread and pour fruit of the vine, we are made whole, and we give thanks for everything Jesus did for us out of love. With great joy this morning, I proclaim in Jesus' name that these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, all is ready. As you take your host, remember that that is the body of Christ, our bread of life. And as you drink the fruit of the vine, you remember you are joining in, sharing in the cup of our salvation. Please join me in praying for our thanks. Christ, Christ we, we come, come to your table. table. At this table, we've been fed. Because of this table, we have been made whole. From this table, we will sing your glory as Easter people. Give thanks for your sharing love. Amen. And we end with Christ has risen.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, but so have we. We are risen. We are risen indeed. Go now and be the resurrected Christ and go and bless this world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.